Hi, this is Tony from LandShack.com and today I will show you how to install our shielded modular plugs for Cat 6A, Cat 6, and Cat 5E using the QuickTrack system featuring the patented load bars. Please note that the connectors for shielded Cat 6 and Cat 5E appear to be the same as the ones for Cat 6A, but they are different due to their internal dimensions. Because of this, you cannot use a CAT 6A plug on a CAT 6 cable and vice versa. Today we will begin by using a CAT 6A cable. These fine connectors are accurately made to industry standards and therefore will work with any brand of standard high quality crimpers. The tools which we will use today are also made by QuickTrex to exacting standards and tolerances and are recommended due to their fine precision, which will produce consistently good results. The following are the QuickTrex tools which we'll be using today. Starting with the Easy Cable Stripper Tool, our award-winning Wire Surgeon Electrical Scissors, followed by our Crimper Tool for RJ45 and RJ1112s, and a Hex Crimper Tool. Before we begin, we'll need to choose a wiring scheme. Basically, there are three to choose from, which are 568A, 568B, or crossover. We'll use 568B, which is a straight through and is most widely recognized and used in close to 99% of the cases. We'll begin by using our easy stripper tool to take off a section of the cable's jacket. We'll start about an inch and a half back from the end of the cable and we will circle the cable once, twice with the easy stripper tool, removing the tool and then bending the insulation back and forth to crack it. Now it's completely severed and we will proceed to pull it off. As you can see the cable has an overall foil shield which we will need to completely remove. I'll use a diagonal cutting plier to cut that short. Now we have a clear plastic overcovering which we are going to remove and at the same time there, there is a, a shield drain wire which we'll need to be careful not to cut and just kind of put it back as we're cutting off the clear plastic from the end of the cable. This cable is almost ready for prep. What we're going to do now is separate all the pairs and we're going to be exposing a center spline which is going to need to also be cut and discarded and we'll use the um, diagonal pliers once again to do that. So now our cable is pretty much prepared for the most part and uh, now we will take the drain wire, fold it back and at this point we'll need to take all the twists out of the wires with the exception of probably the last one on the end and I'm going to show you a little trick to make it a little easier to get the twists off. Once you get it started, you could take a piece of the cable's insulation and use that to twist off the rest of the cable. We're going to leave about one twist on the end of each cable pair. And later I'll show you why. Okay, uh, all the twists are out with the exception of the last one. And as you can see, the wires are all um, jaggedy. And we're going to take care of that with a, a blunt tool, such as, in this case, we'll just use a pair of long nose pliers to kind of straighten out all those jagged shapes from each of the cables.
Okay, there we have it. Our wires are now ready and prepared for the next step, which would be um, fanning out the color scheme for 568B. Here we have the 568B pattern, which we'll be following from left to right. White orange, orange white, white green, blue white, white blue, green white, white brown, and brown white. That's how we're going to configure our cable connector. So we'll start once again from the left side. And again, we're going to leave that little bit of twist at the end of each cable. We'll start with white orange, followed by orange white. Next, we'll split up the green pair and we'll put the white green as the third wire. I'm going to section the other green back a little bit. Then we're going to go with the blue-white followed by, by white-blue, the green-white, the white-brown, and then the brown-white. Now they're all together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on them so we straighten them out, get them close together and nice and straight. The more we pull on it, the straighter it's going to get. And as you can see, there are still a couple of twists left at the end of each pair. Then we'll take our wire surgeon scissors and proceed to make a cut straight across the eight conductors so that we can get the load bar on. We have a nice straight cut there. And now we're going to take the load bar and we're going to take it from the hollow end going into the cable. Okay, the load bar is on. And uh, once again, you can see we have some twists at the end. That's important to uh, cut down on the crosstalk. So we're gonna get the load bar as far as we could get it into those twists. Again, pulling both directions. We're going to check our wiring scheme once again, make sure that everything went in correctly and everything looks good. And now we will take the wire surgeon scissors once again and we'll make a cut on the wire approximately 1 16th of an inch past the load bar. That'll be the end that goes into the actual connector. And there we have it. Now that we're prepared to put this into the connector, we'll take the, uh, make sure that the um, drain wire is not only pushed back, but this time we're going to actually circle it around the edge of the cable's insulation, outer jacket, like so. And then we'll proceed to slide this into the connector putting pressure and making sure that it goes all the way in. And then we'll use our crimp tool, put the connector into the crimp tool, and crimp down on the eight conductors. Okay, now that we've crimped the eight conductors, now it's time to make the other connection, which is the shielding, okay? We put the drain wire around the cable at the end, and now we are going to proceed to take the drain wire clamp and start to clamp it onto that drain wire. Now we'll finish with a hex crimp around the entire assembly. Because of the shielding on the end, we strongly recommend that you use uh, boots. So the boots that we're going to use are a very special boot. They're sized for the larger Cat 6A cable. They're called 8 millimeter boots. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to slide it on the cable. And we will put it over the connector.
We'll prepare for the other end of the cable by putting the boot on now. The boot will be facing towards the connector on the other side. Now we'll repeat the process that we've done before. Okay, now that we have both connectors on the cable terminated, we'll plug them into the tester and make sure that everything came out good. And we have a good cable. Well, that concludes today's demonstration. Please remember us here at LandShack.com for all your cabling and infrastructure needs.